The story says that at the helm of the Nicaraites, Emperor Justinian and his terrified subjects prepared whatever was possible, trying to flee the Byzantine Empire. It was at this point that a woman, described as an indomitable woman, Empress Theodora, wife to Emperor Justinian, intercepted them with a few words of courage that made them to stay and defeat the rebels who were already at the gate. The deadly riots had been ignited by heavy taxes imposed by Emperor Justinian upon the Byzantine people. They had started a week before at the Hippodrome, the circus center, and had claimed very many lives, but they ended at the same place at the Hippodrome, with about 30,000 people who were behind the riots slaughtered. Hello, my name is Kelly Ramapera. This is Ramapedia. We are in the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, in 532 AD, at a time when Emperor Justinian's taxation policy had ignited riots in the public and they were about to oust him. Empress Theodora, the wife to Justinian, said a few words, a speech that is recorded as a speech of an indomitable woman in history and made the frightened emperor and his subjects to return to fight the rebels, restored the throne and consolidated their power. My lords, the present occasion is too serious to allow me to follow the convention that a woman should not speak in a man's council. Those whose interests are threatened by extreme danger should think only of the wisest course of action, not of conventions. In my opinion, flight is not the right course, even if it should bring us to safety. It is impossible for a person, having been born into this world, not to die. But for one who has reigned, it is intolerable to be a fugitive. May I never be deprived of this purple robe, and may I never see the day when those who meet me do not call me Empress. If you wish to save yourself, my lord, there is no difficulty. We are rich, over there is the sea, and yonder are the ships. Yet, reflect for a moment whether when you have once escaped to a place of security, you would not gladly exchange such safety for death. As for me, I agree with the adage that the royal purple is the noblest shroud. When you listen carefully to her speech, Empress Theodora gives a clear picture of what she thinks life is. She says that early death and later death are all the same. In fact, the speech stresses that if you have power, you better die with power. She says that everyone will die, so dying with power is a thing of honor. In other words, if you have wealth and you have power, they should be yours forever. As Empress Theodora speaks to Emperor Justinian and his subordinates, Empress Theodora points to her purple clothes, the glorious clothes. I think it is at this point that Justinian came to realize that all the things he had done to make an empress in the Byzantine Empire was going to end in futile. It is worth to note that the marriage of the two was very unacceptable because Empress Theodora was a prostitute, an actress who was known to worth marrying someone who would become an emperor. Emperor Justinian approached his uncle before he became emperor and convinced him to change the laws of the Byzantine Empire such that there could be clauses that allow a person such as Theodora to marry Justinian. So all these seemed to him that his endeavors to make Theodora an empress in this Byzantine Empire were going to end in futile in case he flees the empire. So when Empress Theodora convinces him, he listens. Empress Theodora somehow challenges Emperor Justinian and his subordinates when she mentions that there is no difficulty in fleeing. If they want to flee, they can flee. These are men, great men of the empire. It's as if she's saying that if I were a man like you, I would choose something that is difficult and that something is not fleeing. We are also introduced to the fact that these people were rich. They have ships or wealth of natural resources 
resources like the sea and on the other hand this is evidence of how far Emperor Justinian and his subordinates and his government went in impoverishing people because Empress Theodora admits that they are rich while at the gate there are riots of people who want to oust Emperor Justinian because of his taxation policy that had drained the incomes of the local people. Empress Theodora demonstrates a lot of sagacity. She's so sagacious. She looks into the future and tells Emperor Justinian what will happen after fleeing. She says that if you want to flee, yet reflect what will happen after fleeing. In fact, she brings an image that when Emperor Justinian and his subordinates flee the empire, they will be pursued, they will be killed, and they will die in exile. Which brings us back to the words that she has just said, that it's better to die an emperor than dying a poor man. She even puts it clear that being buried in the royal shroud is the noblest death. But let me share with you a little bit of history of this woman. Empress Theodora, when she was young, her father died. Her father was working in the Hippodrome as a beer keeper. Her mother was an actress. So the mother married another man. And the mother thought that this new man would be employed at the Hippodrome as the beer keeper to replace the husband who had died. It was a norm of the day that when a man dies, his son succeeds him in his work. If he has no son, someone else, a brother, can succeed him. Or someone else who marries the woman can succeed him. But unfortunately, at the Hippodrome, they refused to employ this new man. And the family was poverty-stricken. This is when Theodora, when she was a young girl, she resorted into prostitution. And she keeps this hatred for the people at the Hippodrome. So she grows up as a woman of misery. At this point, she has reached the climax of her life and she's not ready to go back to a life of misery. This is why she's determined rather to die instead of going into exile. So as a person who grew up in difficult life, she's ready now to die a good death as a noble woman instead of going into exile. This is what drives her determination. But when you analyze carefully and what was going on in this empire, Emperor Justinian was doing the right thing when he tried to flee because fleeing meant that the will of the people would reign he had imposed heavy taxes over the people and now the people were turning against him. So fleeing was one way of demonstrating that he has accepted the will of the people. Before this act of trying to flee, he had tried to calm down the, the rioters and they agitated that he should leave power. So when he's trying to flee, he's saying that I have accepted and let me leave power with you the people. This is a good thing. And when you analyze the speech by Empress Theodora, it is full of ego, self-aggrandizement. There is nothing like the empire, the nation, the people. She's thinking of her wealth and her power. So she does whatever is possible to have Emperor Justinian stay because she knows that he has the power to stay and defeat the rebels. But he was fleeing because he was accepting the will of the people, which she doesn't want. She wants her will to be done. This is a woman who has gone through misery. When you listen carefully to the words in her speech, there are statements like, My opinion, may I, may I, those who meet me, those who call me, we are rich. As for me, I agree, my lords, allow me, bring us. So she's egocentric. In other words, this woman hated this country. Remember that even becoming an empress, it is the endeavors of her husband who loved her so much. But the laws of the empire could never allow her to be married by Emperor Justinian. So she would never become an empress. Even the family members never accepted her. So she has no love for this country, not for the family, not for the society, not for the empire as a political entity. 
So in bringing her egoistic ideas, she's right because she has never been loved by any entity in this empire. In other words, she's willing to give up everything about the empire, about the people, about the society in pursuit of her will, which is not the same as Emperor Justinian. So Justinian listens to her and he convinces the rioters that he's going to have a peaceful deal with them. But the logic behind is Emperor Justinian and Empress Theodora have informed the military to surround the people who come to the Hippodrome for a meeting with Justinian. And when the Crime Dora Crime come, the people who represent the will of the people, about 30,000 of them came to meet Emperor Justinian in the Hippodrome. The military surrounds them and slaughters one by one and Empress Theodora is relieved because she has triumphed over the will of the people that has always been an impediment to her goals. There is a lot to say about Empress Theodora's speech, but let's stop here for this time. I thank you so much. My name is Kelly Ramapera. This is Ramapedia. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel.